Ahoy there, Epic Plasma Gamers! Welcome back to our devlog series on Thurbro, a game about a green dude in a green world who throws green blocks at other green dudes. Oh yeah, this has been an incredible week for Thurbro, we've gotten so much done. As you know, good games have about three common elements. One, gameplay. Two, colors. And three, boss battles. This week we finally did one of those three things. So this week started with the boss, and it all started with a little sketch on some paper. I drew this big green guy and thought, he kind of looks like a golem, which led to some more inspiration. I then went into A-Sprite and separated his limbs so I could animate him easily. Look at him go. With that in place, I had a really good foundation for the rest of the fight. I started off by giving him three separate attacks. To start, he has this walking attack, because you already know how terrified I am of walking. Next up, we have a jumping phase, where he leaps above the player and then falls on him. Lastly, we have this attack where he grabs a giant boulder and launches it at the player. Pretty cool stuff. Now that's all fine and good, but I had to keep in mind that not all players are as terrified of walking as I am. So we spiced him up a little bit. His difficulty now scales with his health. As he reaches the middle of the fight, he jumps more sporadically towards the edges of the map. He also starts to walk faster. Once the player gets close to finishing the fight, the danger fruit we showed off in the last episode starts to fall from the treetops. Here's a preview of how the fight turned out along with an epic boss theme I wrote for his battle. I wanted to put some focus in actually polishing the boss battle, because it's all well and good to have an interesting fight with the boss, but if it looks like this, then nobody's gonna care about it. Unless it's just shapes and beats. But the first step into polishing that I wanted to do was go in and actually add sound effects to the different attacks that the boss does. I haven't really talked much about how I make sound effects on the channel, but if you're a game dev making retro-style games, I think you'll like this program. It's called BFXR, and I'll leave a link in the description, but you can literally open it and just click a button for the type of sound effect you're wanting, and it will auto-generate a sound based on it. Then if you know a lot about audio engineering, you can mess with all the different settings, or just do what I do and keep spamming the button until it sounds like something I like. The first sound is this whistle noise for when the boss doesn't jump. The second one is this explosion sound for when he lands as well as when he spawns. And the smaller ones are just a noise when he gets hit and a noise for when he throws this rubble. Doing this added a lot more to the game than I was expecting, and makes it feel a lot more impactful when he does his attacks. The next thing I did was actually make an animation for when the boss spawns in. Now, I won't go into detail because we don't want to talk about the story too much yet, but the animation at the start has this UFO coming in and dropping off the boss, which is where the explosion sound plays. I do think that we might be updating the Green Golem in the future, but as for right now, I'm actually super happy with how it turned out. I think he's the right mix of cute and threatening, which is exactly what we're going for with the enemies in this game. That's all we have for the boss right now, but the next thing we did is arguably even cooler. See, in Throwbro, each level has three collectible puzzle pieces that are hidden around each level. They're totally optional and usually out of the way with a challenge or a puzzle making it difficult to collect them. Now, you might be wondering what the point of collecting them is if they're totally optional, and the answer to that is this new bonus level we've implemented. We've planned since the beginning that each world would have an optional bonus level that combined all the mechanics introduced in that world into a much harder level at the end. This would allow us to make more difficult challenges and use the mechanics in ways that really didn't fit the original levels. For example, where you've been introduced to these bounce mushrooms previously, in levels 1 and 2. In this level, there's a big path with only mushrooms and enemies jumping on them, making for a new challenge that builds upon the mechanics in the previous levels. Along with that, one of the new features is something that I've been working on for a little bit, which is the save system for Throw Row, which doesn't sound like a lot, but personally, I really hate making save and load systems for games, but it's just one of those things that you eventually have to do. I guess technically you could go for a code-based system like a lot of older games used to do, which isn't the worst, but I think this suits the game a lot better. Now you can actually go from the world map into the levels and back while keeping all your collectible progress as well as your checkpoint locations. And it's cool because you can actually implement this into your own life. By subscribing and becoming an epic plasma gamer, you can save all your progress without the fear of being forced to respawn. We're actually planning on doing a demo drop for this game on the Discord, so if you want to get a first look at this game or just interact with other epic plasma gamers in the wild, check out the Discord link in the description. And while you're at it, make sure to hit that bell button so YouTube doesn't think you hate us. One of the things I mentioned earlier in the video was the mushrooms, which truly epic plasma gamers will know that we did a vote a couple weeks back asking you which version of the booster you thought was best. We talked about it more in the last video, but here's what it ended up looking like fully implemented. On top of that, we added a couple other mechanics to the game, starting with this umbrella item. You can use this to block danger from above, as well as it just being a fun toy to throw around. And the last thing we implemented was this balloon item. It might not look like much more than a personified fruit, but it's actually super useful letting you infinite jump, which, in a platformer other than Kirby, is kind of a big deal.
feel. It has a lot of uses like traversing through caves or playing Flappy Bird, so we're excited to get to make some content based around it. Unfortunately, that is all we got done this week, but make sure that if you want to keep up on Throwbro that you join the Discord and subscribe. And remember to always stay epic, Plasma Gamers.